Another case of success is completely different. Now it's um, at the scale of an entire country. Is the National Institute of Biodiversity of Costa Rica, INBIO. INBIO was created almost a quarter of a century ago, um, and it was um, conceived originally by a combination of Costa Ricans and uh, American scientists to uh, do an exploration of uh, promising species from the perspective of biotechnology. Um, they were interested mostly in exploring plants and insects and obtain um, leads for either the pharma pharmacy industry or um, other, other kind of industrial applications like enzymes for industrial processes and things like that. INBIO began uh, by assuming that the national institutions didn't have the right approach to exploring uh, the territory. And then created they created a model called the Parataxonomist model, in which uh, local peoples were trained to collect and identify species um, down to, um, sometimes even to species, but mostly uh, to families, genera sometimes. <clears throat> and um, they invented an entire process which was industrial in character uh, with with um, with um, division of labor and with um, a number of technological advances that go went all the way from collecting thousands and thousands of specimens by these parataxonomists sorting them first into classes, into groups, into categories, and then there was an end, uh, labeling them. In the, at, at that time, the revolutionary thing was uh, barcode, not genetical barcoding, but real barcodes that you see in the supermarkets. And then there was another group of people engaged in identification and taxonomically um, um, analyzing the, all the specimens that were pouring into the facilities of NBO. Um I'm not going to discuss whether this worked well or not in the sense of uh, sustainability and how much do we know now about the biodiversity of Costa Rica. That would be an entire lecture. <clears throat> but what happened was that this initiative that began, as I said, uh, as uh, by the 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 well inspired by ideas of scientists, became very interesting for the government of Costa Rica. The government of Costa Rica, for years and years, never give uh, never gave any any um, uh, economical support to Inbio and what they were doing. But their relationships were extremely friendly. Imbio, Imbio, Imbio was getting most of their money from uh, from the um, donations of European agencies. Uh, so uh, the relations between Imbio and the Costa Rican government were always very, very friendly, mostly, and very, uh, very cooperative. So <clears throat> what happens is that this accumulation of data about uh, the whereabouts of the biodiversity in Costa Rica and also things related to uh, possible values of, of, of things uh, and uh, ecosystem functioning also to an extent and restoration began uh, influencing the policies of the Costa Rican government, how they ran uh, the protected areas, uh, the work together with INBIO. They were working. INBIO was extremely astute to, to to work together with um, different stakeholders, be them uh, peasants or ranchers or uh, the, 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 um, the officers of the Costa Rican government working in the protected areas. Uh, they, they developed uh, formally a number of ways of, uh, of uh, well, courses for training people, to develop uh, the model of the parataxonomist as much as they could, and things like that. It was a very interesting um, exercise, and it uh, worked fairly well in the sense that Costa Rica began changing the ways the government uh, um, managed biodiversity. 
from the from the the ways uh, the protected areas were managed and and were um, uh, well operated because in most of the protected areas now there were taxonomists doing the the inventories uh, of the protected areas uh, which before that never happened or seldom happened uh, to 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 things like uh, for instance documenting ecosystem services ecosystem services like uh, like water capture um, um, or rather the importance of water catchment areas and then all the way to create taxes that would uh, support the communities or the owners of the land upstream where the catchment took place but the water was used downstream by by ranchers or by farmers or by villages or whatever so the Costa Rican government actually created the taxes that would um, uh, uh, pay money to the providers of ecosystem services um, this was all done by the by the collaboration and because of the ideas of Imbio. Imbio went all the way to try to, to, to influence the way the entire Costa Rican society looked at biodiversity. This is one of their most interesting um, in attempts. Uh, it's very unique. I don't think many countries in the planet could, could could do something like that and Costa Rica could because they are a very small country, really small, and also because it's a very well-educated country. Um, it's been well-educated traditionally for, for, for many, many decades, not, not, not just a recent thing. Um, measured probably in, in, in centuries that they have been, uh, um, been a literate and um, uh, interested in science country. It's despite the fact that it's, it's tiny. So they could do this probably because they had this very favorable environment. Uh, but uh, the fact of the, of the matter is that they, they did it. Uh, Costa Rica is a country where the schools, the primary schools, have their, their, their projects to document biodiversity. The web page of Imbio is, which is, uh, I am going to include it either to the left or to the right or below or wherever you will see that the web page of, of Imbio is um, uh, visited very 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 frequently by millions of people uh, the the scientific uh, findings of Imbio affected the fact that they were the legislation because they were providing um, samples to big companies and getting uh, money out of them for the samples and also for the technology. They learned a lot. Costa Rica developed a lot in terms of science uh, and technologically by their interactions with, with uh, large companies. They affected the way tourism is done in, in Costa Rica. They created a theme park of biodiversity. Um, they 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 convince the airlines to give information to tourists about Costa Rican uh, biodiversity and so on. It was very very intense, very integrated, and very well done. I think it's uh, it's a very interesting um, lesson, and some of the lessons of the the papers that I mentioned and the experience are very clearly here. Involvement of stakeholders at all levels. So um, this is, this has legitimacy. Good science, first class science. This this provides the credibility um, on relevant themes, not just on what a scientist wanted to do because um, she or he wanted to publish a paper, but because there were there were stakeholders interested in in the problem. The problem was came from the needs of some uh, stakeholders that were not the scientists themselves. And remember the institution, INBIO, was there for years and years and years and years, working with the Ministry of the Environment, working with the communities, working with the ranchers, working with the farmers, working with the coffee uh, growers, etc. 
uh, this 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 idea of the institution, the bridging institution that is translating and it's uh, and it's the, uh, communicating and follows up the processes, it's very clearly exemplified by INBI in Costa Rica. The final example I would like to to give to you it's again one of my country, Conabio, um, and it's related to an effort to do what is called a gap analysis of the territory in terms of conservation. This gap analysis has the intention to um, um, well, tell the government where to start new protected areas and, um, and what kind of activities to realize in those protected areas. It's not just a matter of protecting, but what, whether it would be possible to allow some sustainable forestry or some ranching or things like that. So it's not just the protected areas but the kind of activities that would be allowed and uh, at what rates in those uh, areas. <coughs> this began uh, with, a, with a proposal by one of the large NGOs, uh, international NGOs, uh, to do it according to their own methodology. Uh, the government of Mexico didn't want to use a single methodology because it's a big country with many, many different, um, um, many different institutions. So we began doing a joint uh, methodological set of meetings with the big NGOs, all of them, with the local NGOs with the scientists and with all the um, the federal agencies that would be in the end involved in this. And this took a long time and actually some people dropped by. Um, some of them didn't want to, to, to do it. But most were interested and, and they uh, uh, attended the, the, the seminars and the workshops for the the year or so that it required to, to develop a common agreement. When the agreement was reached, uh, we started having uh, another set of, of meetings just to compile all the databases and organize them and uh, allocate the, the, the work and uh, ensure that every interested party would be um, there contributing with something, not just uh, uh, telling others what to do, but uh, actually contributing with, with information or with methods or with data. And that took the best part of, of another year and probably a bit more. But uh, the, result, the results were extremely interesting and satisfactory because not only we used a, a ton of data that Conavio had been assembling for, for 10 years at that time or more. But also <clears throat> we, we included the, the collaboration of many of the major um, scientific institutions in the country. In the end, the reports of the books, which I am showing this side of the screen, these reports... Um, were signed all together in the chapters by almost 600 uh, scientists from Mexico, 400 in the, in the first four books and extras in the next one, which is just being um, compiled. Uh, there are, there are, uh, the, the, um, uh, the maps that were produced are available in, uh, as web services in Conavio's um, uh, web page. Um, there is, for the first time, Mexico now has a list of all the species that have been reported for the country, which is in the order of 100,000. Um, a compilation of just the names, which is so such a simple thing. Well, it took a lot of effort to finish that. And which is, what is more important is that this entire process uh, is now being used by government agencies, but also by the NGOs themselves to plan their activities. So you see, this is again the same the same lessons that uh, that the cash uh, paper, uh, cash et al. paper uh, reports and several of the others I mentioned 
legitimacy, relevancy, and credibility. All these things are necessary to 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 to, to perform the, the 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 complete process, and. Uh, this kind of things, although it can be um, done by individual academics and specific individuals doing it themselves, it works better when there is some institution with a capacity to 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 uh, to convene all the participants to provide the spaces, the environments, the times, the support, and uh, capable of perhaps funding the process or capable of getting the fund for the funding to do to do something like what I just described this um, capital natural of Mexico the natural capital of Mexico a series of uh, all the books that they report well altogether it was almost two million dollars and we got a lot of the money from the GF uh, but uh, the back uh, all the background was there already the, the big databases, the capacity to do huge GIS exercises, and mostly the fact that there were hundreds of scientists in Mexico willing to participate and willing to do uh, the, this thing. That's what gives it the power. The institution just facilitated all that to happen. I believe that without the institution it wouldn't have happened. So, what's first, the hen or the egg? I don't know. Uh, you need both. Well, time to say goodbye. I hope I didn't bore you with uh, these videos I kept sending. Uh, probably Professor Peterson uh, was uh, wise enough as to distribute them uh, scattered uh, amongst the, the real life presentations and the discussions and um, the seminars. Um, I wish I would have been, I could possibly have been there, but uh, to me it was, it was impossible. So, all the best, my best wishes to all, and enjoy Cape Town.